Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I do hope you decide to like and subscribe and click that notification bell. It is Wednesday, February the 15th, and I want to say a great big happy birthday to my sister-in-law, Angie. I hope you have a wonderful birthday today that truly celebrates your awesomeness. I mean to say, my sister-in-laws, I am so blessed. They are such beautiful, strong women, and she is someone I always aspire to be like. She is just wonderful. Our devotions are coming from... Joyce Meyer's book called Trusting God Day by Day. And our devotion today is entitled The Importance of Unity. Our scripture comes from the book of Psalm, chapter 133, verses 1 and verse 3. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the dew of lofty Mount Hermon and the dew that comes on the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, even life forevermore, upon the high and the lowly. Oh, I love that. I love this psalm because this principle is so powerful. Life is enjoyable when people live in unity and keep strife or conflict out of their lives. Now, by the way, most people take unity as being, I want it this way and everybody needs to agree with me. And because if it's not my way, then there's going to be conflict. Most of the time we're in conflict because something isn't the way we want it. That's where compromise comes in. And I, I just, I can't even begin to tell you how many issues occur because of this one thing a lack of unity. All right, let's read on. On the other hand, there is nothing worse than a home or relationship filled with an angry undercurrent of strife. Perhaps that's why unity is one of the last things Jesus prayed about before he was arrested and crucified. During the last supper, he prayed that they all may be one, just as you, Father, just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, so that the world may believe and be convinced that you have sent me. That's found in John 17, 21. You might be able to preach a sermon or memorize Bible verses. You might do many good works and share the message of salvation with others. However, if you do all this, yet you are living in strife rather than in unity, your life will lack peace, joy, and blessing. If you are wondering why you aren't experiencing more of God's power and blessing in your life, look at your relationships. Do you have strife with your spouse, your children, your co-workers, or your fellow believers? Is there strife? Do you cause or participate in conflict in your church or on the job? Do all all you can to keep the strife out of your life and live in peace. Remember, where there is unity, there will also be anointing and blessing. You know, I was, before I get into the trust in him portion for today, you know, I was reflecting back on, you know, some circumstances and situations and someone asking questions. Let me be clear for clarification, is communication. It's not strife. So you generally will have people who come up with an idea to do something. Let's just say there's a group of people at the church who want to plan an event. All right, let's just, let's do Pastor Appreciation Day. Let's come up and do an event. And they, they think it would be good to do this, this, and this, and you have other people who think it's a better idea to do something else. This is a perfect ground for disunity, conflict. There has to be a middle ground. Now, somebody asking questions that maybe you hadn't thought of, you know, because I'm a great ideas person, 
but I sometimes don't think through the details of how something would need to be executed, the state, the, the steps that would need to be taken and how much time it would take for those things to be executed. Okay. And you're dealing with different personality types as well, because there is a personality type that's excellent and perfect at getting the step-by-step -step process going. However, the step-by-step -step process can be so caught up in that process that nothing ever gets accomplished because they're so hung up on those little details. Whereas I'm the kind of person that's decisive, will push forward and say, let's just do this, you know. So there has to be balance. There has to be balance. I, My personality type would have to be in unity with, okay, we do have to take some steps and plan. But the on the other hand, the, the planner can't be so hung up on the details of everything being exactly perfect that nothing ever gets decided upon because they're in turmoil over making a decision. And they can't, you see what I'm saying? There has to be give and take on both sides. And asking questions and communicating and getting clarification can often be depicted as, oh, they're stirring up conflict. Oh, they're doing this. Oh, they're doing that. It's important. Now, I know some people who just just to play and they call it devil's advocate. That's exactly what it is. They will ask questions and stir up strife just for the sake of creating conflict. This is not what we're talking about. Okay? And respecting somebody and valuing something that everybody brings to the table recognizing that maybe not everybody's going to be in love with this idea or that idea is where you make a decision to be in unity. Okay. Acknowledging someone's concerns or acknowledging that particular idea. You may have somebody who we're, we're still on the event idea. Okay. They're trying to plan something. You may have one person that wants to do a quiet, dignified meal with the, at the church that involves everybody and then someone else who wants to do something on the level of, you know, a big party with balloons and carnival type atmosphere, you know, that's maybe a little more fun and not as dignified. You have two completely different ideas and that can create conflict. There have been people who've been divided in the church. Boom, no unity. When it comes right down to it, what needs to be done is the agreement that we want to honor the pastor and we have to find a way that satisfies both thoughts and ideas. Looking at the budget and that's where there has to be compromise. Okay. And this is where there usually isn't compromise. Somebody can scorn the person who has a little bit more of a fun loving idea about doing things and say they have no class. They're so brass and they want to do everything in a big showy way and he's the pastor and we ought to do something a little bit more dignified. And, you know, you people can have attitudes about it. Oh, they're stuffed shirts. They don't want to ever have fun. You see what I'm saying? The devil is going to be all in that. And the, the importance of unity is to come together with the thoughts and the idea of what is the purpose of what it is that we're doing. And let all the details take care of themselves. I mean, I have been involved in some planning committees that they, they would spend an hour with my eyes crossing discussing the color of the paper and the font that's going to be used on the, the, the invitation or the little card that's going to be at everyone's place. And I look at them and I'm like, seriously, we're spending an hour of our meeting time on that detail when that's probably going to get thrown in the trash or the napkin. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the paper napkin. Trying to decide the font that's going to go on a paper napkin. I'm like, I don't even believe that this is happening. I said, why? That was the micromanagement, which I don't do well under. I really do not do well under micromanagement. If you want it, you take that detail. I will wipe my mouth with whatever font is on that napkin. I could care less. Let's get to the to the serious stuff. But there have been there have been things where there has been disunity and I have not understood why you know, I'm a decisive person. I, I some things I just don't and I'm not putting down the, the personality type that wants those specifics. I've never understood how it impacts the the overall That's me. But 
you see how Satan can take the simplest little thing and turn it into a huge thing to create disunity and strife. And as believers, we need to guard ourselves against such things. I'm not giving the devil a foothold for anything. Not a bit. So, our trust in him today. Think about your relationships. What do you see in them that might be hindering the flow of God's blessing in your life? Does everything have to be your way or the highway? If things aren't exactly the way you want them, are you creating strife, putting people down? Are you always ready to snap if something isn't the way you want it? Whether it's the way the house is, because I'm thinking from a, from a mother or woman's perspective, your house isn't the way you want it. Are you going to let that, you know, someone left the cap off the toothpaste, uh, someone put a knife in the sink instead of cleaning it and putting it in the dish drainer or stick it in the dishwasher. Someone left a crumb on the counter. I mean, some of you, know, you see what I'm saying? What is it in the relationships, your friendships, your marriage between your children? Where is the enemy coming in? Okay. God wants you to live in unity and be blessed. That's what he wants. The enemy does not want that. He wants the opposite. You can trust him to help you get your life on track. But you have to be willing to do your part and stay in peace and unity. You can't make somebody else change. You have to look at yourself first. You trust God to deal with the other people and bring them on board. Not to say that anybody is to be bulldozed over and to give way to everyone else's way. There has to be mutual respect. Unity is not one person calling the shots and everybody else just going along with it. That's not unity. That's dictatorship. Many people will back off and not speak up for the sake of quote unquote peace. Uh, that's not unity, just so you know, okay? But ask the Holy Spirit to show you, all right? It's so very important because we are responsible for how we behave in our relationships and in our life, all right? There are some personality types bolder than others. If you're a people pleaser, you can't always be a people pleaser. You have to come out of that and stand up for yourself instead of being a doormat where your voice is never heard. You see what I'm saying? But if you're, you're somebody who tends to be bold, tends to be like a bulldozer, you have to also take an account. Are you bulldozing and not allowing other people's voices to be heard? Is your will always the one being exerted over everything? See what I mean? That's not right either. <laughs> there has to be balance. And it's important to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you about that. He knows you. He wants you to be at peace. He wants everyone else to be at peace. He does, And being at peace is not getting your way. Okay? Doesn't necessarily mean, oh, if it's, you know, because I know some people, they are not at peace unless it's what they want don't think that's okay. <laughs> I don't think the Holy Spirit is okay with that. Okay. So lots of work. Holy Spirit, show me. I want to be in unity and I want to be in peace. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we know how important unity is. And we want to be in unity with you and with those that are in our lives, family, friends. Lord, show us where we're missing it. Show us where we're falling short. Help us, Lord, to step up and either take a step back or step forward, whichever, whichever, wherever we fall. We want to be in unity so that we can live a life that is blessed and peaceful. We thank you, Lord, for your word. Hide it in our hearts and help us to grow. Help us to grow 
We love you, Lord. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear and hide your word in our heart. We thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click that notification bell. Come back and check out some of the other content on my channel. Yesterday, I had a great day with my hubby. We went to this place here in the Hampton Roads area called the Sweet Spot. I think that's brand new to me. It's a dessert bar, basically. And I had their My Valentine milkshake, which was chocolate strawberry ice cream whirled up into a milkshake. But it also had a heart-shaped brownie, a heart-shaped cream-filled vanilla cake, a sugar cookie, and a scoop each of chocolate and strawberry ice cream in a pink cone turned upside down in on top of all. It was unbelievable. So much sugar. I'm detoxing today. My husband had something else. I did my best. I didn't, I couldn't finish it, of course, but it was fantastic. It was good. It'll be a treat. Basically, my dessert could have fed him, me, and my granddaughter. And there probably still would have been leftovers. <laughs> It was unbelievable, but it was really cute, beautifully decorated in pink and flowers and all this. It was wonderful. But I hope you had a wonderful time yesterday. It uh, was a great Valentine's Day for me. So God bless you. If you uh, know any family or friends that you think would be blessed by these devotions or any of the other content I have, please share my channel. And those who have been here, you guys blow me away. I never thought ever. So God bless you and bye until next time.